So, it's an amazing to be in Barcelona yeah. in Easter week. Yeah? <laughs> Everything is busy. So I'm very glad to be here. Uh, my name is Miss Barb Smith Var Varclova. Everybody in English pronounces Varclova, but oh. you know, I am, it's okay. I am used to 50. Now over almost 10 years, everybody's saying it wrong, so that's fine. Uh, but it's about that, like when we're coming from that countries, when people we pronounce things different way. So I'm originally from the Czech Republic, but I'm living in UK. And I will tell you a little bit of my story, uh, because it's important for understanding why I'm standing here today and what I will speak about. Um, I grew up in a communist era of uh, Czechoslovakia in that time and uh, most people don't actually understand how much it's traumatized everybody living in oppression yeah uh, sometimes like when you have in TV the advertisement for food but when you actually walk to the shop and there is nothing or um, how uh, are treated uh, with the teachers uh, or in medical care if your parents are not agreeing with the, uh, with the regime and you are living under surveillance of the secret police, not allowed to move, not allowed to do what you want to do, you know, and, and other things. So I grew up in a lot of childhood trauma and I didn't realize it that I'm actually grew up in childhood trauma until I was 17 and I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome and I was unable to get out of the bed and that in that time was quite new diagnosed and doctors just say like, no, we know that it's supposed to be named chronic fatigue syndrome, newly named ME, but we have no idea what to do with that because it just means that your whole body, your org organism just kind of don't want to work. And they had this amazing sentence. They told me, you need to learn to live with that. Or you need to learn to manage it. I was like, that's impossible if your daily achievement is get to the toilet and you have permanent headaches and permanent pain, you are not able to focus, you are not able to sleep, you cannot manage, you cannot learn to live with that. That's not how we as the human are supposed to live. Yeah. And I was lucky on <laughs> actually in my search for solution because I said like, that's not possible. I'm not accepting that this is the how I'm supposed to live. And I start searching and I was lucky and I find the Silva method of control mine are now quite popular in that time, very unknown, especially in Eastern Europe. And I get uh, to be taught by uh, Dragan Vujovic, one of the last person who was taught directly by Jose Silva in, in US about how minds work and how it's connected with the body. And just to kind of show you the power of the mind, I would ask the volunteer, and I would like that Dr. Duval, if he'll come as volunteer, you like testing. Come, let's do little tests. <laughs> or some men. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> you see that, you know, he has nice physique and definitely bigger and definitely stronger than me and in physical strength, is it, in, in power, yeah? So I will ask you to try to bend my hand, if you will put, so yeah, like this. Back. And it's like in physics, we say that it's impossible to resist mm -hmm. with the power, yeah? He will do that, yeah? And now I will just change my mindset. Try now. Was it different? Yes. Yeah, because we just by our mindset, we can change the state of our body. Thank you. Everybody can try, I'm willing to try with you in the, in the break, because it's really important to understand that we trying to understand how body works and what hormones are created or how our nervous system works or how our brain physically works. But it's all of it is directed by our mind that invisible, untouchable, unmeasurable part, which is mind, which is the why we are born and why we can or cannot understand what the soul is, yeah? This will be a different discussion, but you know, like, we have the mind. And the mind is actually the director of everything. And how we change our mind, how we set up our mindset, that's influencing our body, 
our reactions, everything, yeah? So I'm standing down here for you. I don't have chronic fatigue syndrome. I don't have allergies. I don't have destroyed livers. I don't have uh, destroyed the spine after car accident because of mindset, because of working through the mind, through the body. But I get really annoyed to looking around and see so many people suffering from the results of childhood trauma and not understanding that they're even suffering from childhood trauma. If this will work. Maybe old fashioned arrow will work. Doesn't seem to be working. So, what are all results of childhood drama? Lack of confidence and self esteem, lack of boundaries, eating disorders, drug and alcohol abuse, pro problems with the anger, workaholism. Shopaholism, burnouts, depression, panic attacks, nightmare, insomnia, disassociation, toxic and unstable relations, fears of everything, change, success, attention, being herself, flying, spiders, pain, autoimmune disorders, and like, let's go on. Yeah? Because the all is are just different result of childhood trauma, it is just different result of our trauma responses on what's happened to us as the children. And often we speaking about fight and flight, which is this natural reactions, which we have when we get into the danger. But these two reactions allowing us to get out of situation. We fight out or we, we run out. All these reactions are about to get off the situation, overcome on get off. So they get that person or get animal or out or we get ourselves out. But children cannot get out. If the parents shouting to each other and there is two years old toddlers, he cannot get out. She cannot get out. They are there and they are there for decades. Every time when they are mentally, physically, sexually, emotionally abused, which including mom's anger of outburst because she is the spread, coldness, too little expectation, too much expectations, um, divorce, drug alcohol abuse, aggression, not knowing what, who is coming to the doors, if today daddy will be nice or if he'll be angry. Or if mom will come from the work and will be nice or she will be just bursting. That all creating trauma responses. Because every single time when the child is afraid, it will come also anger as protector. Because anger is not negative emotion. Anger is our protective emotion. Is that when we're saying, put up your boundaries. How many women and men will say, I have no idea what the boundaries are. I don't know where they are. I know that they're walking over them, but <laughs> I don't really know how to set them up. Because children developing the freeze and fall response. Freeze is mean that they hide, they do nothing, they go to depression, they go into social anxiety, they uh, create disassociation, or phone, people pleasing, just adapt myself to the environment the way that I will survive. That's not what I want to do. It's what I'm doing to survive that situation. It's both of them leading to total suppression of that person as the person. Who they really are, what they really want, who, what is their purpose, how to be vulnerable, how to connect in the relationship, and then stucking and sucking emotions in and in and in. Because emotions are supposed to be outside. Emotions is a reaction to the outside event showing outside. So I have the drama. And emotions we are representing, is it? We are smiling when we are happy, we are crying when we are sad, we are red and shouting and angry when we are angry. It's all going out. 
But if we are not allowed to put it out, and children are not allowed to put it out, they start stucking him inside, piling, 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 more and more and more. But they want to go out. They want to go out. So they keep coming out. And then we, will, we have those who will become aggressive or they will be have outbursts of the anger. And then we will find a label for them and we would say that they have borderline personality disorder. They have no disorder, There's nothing wrong with them. They just don't know what to do with that stuck emotion because was never taught how to express them. Or they will start to escape it, numb it in the form of drug abuse, alcohol abuse, Women will choose to control the eating or eat too much, too little, or changing partners, changing jobs, keep moving, f hoping that in other country, other town, something will be better, something will change. Or they will just try to adapt and adapt and adapt. And they will end up in the toxic relationship because they will find somebody who has this issue. I don't know how to express their emotions and trying to be controlling, but they have to, they solving in the, in the way that they trying to adapt. And then we will have the victim of the narcissistic abuse and then we will have narcissists, but very often the person who was as the child very suppressed and not uh, allowed to be themselves. And it's going generation on generation. So some people have been saying that it's generational. It's not. It's not genetic. It's just learned behaviors because we saw them and because they're passing on. And you can see for generation in the last 100 years because we have the war and we have the no man's examples. Because, yeah, men went to the war and they died. Yeah? So then we have the, the army of the men, women trying to survive without men change in society. As they some say, so I didn't want to choose a feminism. I actually was happy to be mum. Nothing wrong with that to want to be mum, is it? But if you have to go to the work and have to t take care of the children and have it all, is it actually working? For some people, it does. But if they don't, if they didn't want it, if it wasn't their choice, was it just push on them again. They just suppressing, suppressing. They don't know. They are not adapted for that. And they was already affected by the trauma of the war of losing people and not have the time to process it. What, what that, that fear and PTSD created in them. And they're just trying to raise the children with their own PTSD. So their reactions causing the trauma to their children and their children causing trauma to their children. Yeah. But it's just all that. We can practically all what we say personality disorder can find on this map if there are more in one or another, or if they're switching between them. Yeah. So if we know how it's created, do we know how to fix it? And a, a lot of research, a lot of things is focused on how to define it, how we labeling things, and we, we, we narrowing if it's something ADHD, ADHD, uh, BP, BPD, da, da, da. we have like so many acronyms, you know, and I, I come to me people who has 20 diagnoses. I say, like, I have this and this and this and this and this and this. So like, yeah, you are traumatized. Because it doesn't matter. It actually doesn't matter which trauma response their mind choose. I just choose one which seems like best in that environment they were. So was their oldest child or youngest child? because children will not use the same one, because they will look on the other one and say, oh, he's trying this one. It doesn't seem working. I will try the other one. So three children in the same family, each will have the different response. Because they just all three trying to survive. But I was looking around. And I was trying, and I was searching, and I was trying with people. And I find that there are actually five pillars which we have inside our mind. Not in our body, but our mind have the five inner parts, functional parts. We can just 
some different, you know, this flying like uh, higher self, lower self, and stuff. So they're all actually re requesting that you know who you are, all these other definition of the self. But we all have, we are all born with the five parts which needs to function together to be functional, healthy, and purposeful and happy adults. We are born with them. Children are not born unhappy. Children are not born with, with anger like that, you know, overcome by that. And if they are, then it's because they get it from their mom during the pregnancy because they are basic in her emotions. That can be solved also. But one, the main one, or main one, they, we need all of them, but the one we really losing when we are a traumatized as children, and the amount of children who are traumatized, it's not in lower percentage. I would roughly guess between about 60 to 85 percent of children in the world are traumatized. Yeah, and we have just if we will take just um, just little statistics for those who like statistics. And the research two years ago was estimated that over 25 percent of the girls in the US population were sexual abuse under age 15. That's a millions of people. We're not speaking about how many boys were sexual abused because they don't want to speak about that. But I can tell you that every man who come to depressed to me was sexual abused as the child. So my expectation is that percentage of men who were sex sexually in some way abused as the children is much higher than we, than we, you know, like actually recognizing. Then also uh, in UK was done research over 31 children living in the poverty or uh, adverse childhood experiences. There's another millions, you know, and it's everywhere. If you look on India, if you look on or countries which have war or post-war, you know, we have now Ukraine, we have the refugees, we have refugees in Europe, we have refugees in Africa, we have refugees in India, you know, it's everywhere. People migrating, you know, you have cultural shock. You want to take children for the better life. Hooray, go for it. But your children will have trauma from it because it will be a cultural shock. You don't know where you are. You don't know what language you speak. You don't know the, 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 the culture there. You, as adult, ne 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 has to deal with that and what the child, yeah? And this inner strength is the part which is not that, which is not that part which is saying, uh, let's do it and um, going for that power of will. We all are able to work with power of will. We get up in the morning and get to the job. If we're losing even that power of will, then we won't even get up in the morning and get to the job. Then we will be classified that we are depressed. Yeah? But inner strength is a different strength. It's that strength to show you. That's a strength that we are a bit in. It's a calm. It's a steady. It's a just knowing that I am here now. I'm not reacting from what happened to me 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Because trauma responses, all we have this unknown reason why I feel like this. I don't know why I don't trust that person. I don't know why I cannot speak uh, in a conference. I don't know why I cannot tell the boss that I want to race or I want to even have time off because I'm so tired. I cannot speak up in the meeting. All these things are linked to that, that we are not connected with our inner strengths, that functional part of the mind which needs to work. And I know this is always challenging for everybody who like prescription pills or who, who like to do researches which are amazing to how to understand how our body works. It's, and it's amazing. But it's not solving the issue because the solving of issue is actually tell the mind to work. When the mind works, the body works. It's not the opposite way. Because when we do opposite way, it's always coming back. They get better and they will get worse after the same time. They get better and they get worse. But when we change the mind, it's never going back. So I'm working with people coming to me, most of the time saying nobody else able to help me. I'm giving up because 
I'm trying, I'm trying, and I cannot find any solution. I'm, I'm on pills, or I don't know what to do. Uh, I have eating disorder, or I'm diagnosed as uh, borderline personality, all my relationship broken, all my work broken. Uh, and I was told that cannot be fixed that, if it's a woman or if it's a man. Or women who are battered, you know, from toxic relationships. Or uh, women who have the eating disorders, eating too much, too little, anorexia, bulimia, overeating. Or men with eating disorders. Again, don't like to speak about that, but growing number of them. Because that pressure on them, it's the same, and they just start to grappling like how I will survive this requirement. And I find out that when we combine the methods of hypnotherapy, neural language programming, and regression, we can actually very easily get people to reconnect with their inner strength. Because when we get people to that connection with their subconscious level, they are able to find it. And very paradoxically, almost everybody has a very similar image, how it looks like. They are able to work with that in their mind. I able to put it out and look at that and say, okay, it looks like dull, gray, small, ugly, <laughs> almost invisible, different sizes from like little marble to little boundary. And then I asked them very simple question. Let it show you how it's actually look like. If you will stop all these limitations, all these things you learn, over that years, how it will look like. Huge ball. And how it feels when you step to it. Like that, it's changed, it's changed their body. Even if they are in hypnosis, their body will stand up, they will get posture, even sitting, their head will go up, their body, their muscular system, their nervous system will change and they will never go back. They never had the same reactions on things which happening in their life. And I'm working with people for, you know, every week checking on them, monitoring like how you're doing, what is changing in your life. And they start just have that huge awareness of why I'm actually, yeah, I used to do this. Now I'm not doing it. And for example, with the women with the eating disorders, that's huge. Be able to stop that coping mechanism of eating disorder behavior in three, four hours of working with their mind. To not control anymore, not perch anymore, not overeat anymore. Or teenagers who self-harm, not after that. I work with people with was suicidal, not after that. The depression, not after that. They have work on themselves, yes, because they need to learn who they really are. They need to discover all these other things to develop their self-love, because their self-love is developed during childhood, and if they are living in the not nurturing, loving environment, we not develop our self-love, because we don't know how it's supposed to look like. So, we need to develop that. We need to recognize our purpose. But this, when we reconnect with the inner strengths, we are allowed to all our emotions. We can use our happiness and joy. We can use our excitement, our motivation, but also our sadness and our anger. And when we need the anger, when we need to stood up here and tell you people that I think that many of you should rethink the direction you're going. Because it's really important to understand that the, the start is in the mind. Start is in the mind, and we need to start working with the mind. And it's not novelty. We're speaking about neuroplasticity as the new te term or new theory. Yeah, okay. Then they have argument who actually came first with that topic. Yeah, because there's, in that time, the one in Poland and one in, in Germany and one in UK and one in America. So like which one was actually first? It's depending which can't they feel more, you know, secure. But that's not novelty. It's original even in the Bible. It's in Shaolin Kung Fu and in Tao Chi. It's in Sumerian texts. 
He just didn't want to read that. He just didn't want to understand that. We have the teaching of the uh, Ignacio from Loloya, who actually exactly describing this process, how we're supposed to reach that. In 15th century, we have the text of the Saint Germain, who described it in, in 18th century. He just didn't listen. Yeah. And for everybody who can be wary of hypnotherapy, children are in hypnosis all the time. We just grow up from that stage. And we know that because it's just when we are in alpha waves, we can measure it. You know, I hook the people on EEG, uh, you know, when they go to hypnosis and not. It's just normal state. You just manage to be there longer. That state when before you go into the bed and you just drifting off and in the morning when you remember your dreams. That's a stage which we just able to induce. And you all can induce it. You know, I can get you to hypnosis in five seconds if you are going to. You know, I just want to, didn't want to, you know, like anybody free will. <laughs> Anyways, so that when we, when we get to that reconnection with that inner strength, we actually start really working on recovery from trauma. And, nope. Recovery from trauma have the four stages. Which first is even recognition. We spoke about a lot of people don't even realizing that they they suffering with childhood trauma. Uh, we now using the the term uh, complex PTSD, and more of people than many actually would be classified in the psychologic the way they have the complex PTSD. And many psychologists now, I would say, reclassifying people from their diagnosis to be traumatized. Because it's really about that. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just reacting from what's happened to them, what they learned to react, how their minds learned to react, how to survive. For, for one gender, for another. Uh, when we have the controlling man, we call them abusive. When we have the controlling mom, we told them that she's great mom, is it? She keep them in the order. So where the men learn to be controlling? from their mothers. Why, the, why is the woman controlling? Because she's so inside afraid that she's losing control. She's not coping. She's just trying to control her environment. If it's her children, if it's her husband, if it's their work, why women not supporting other women in the work environment very often? Because they're afraid. Because they're afraid of scarcity. That, you know, it took me so much energy to get here. So, like, I don't want to let her to take it from me, you know. Not believing that we all can grow and cooperate and build. So second phase is the release, which we can do with several methods. I personally find the, the somatic hypnotherapy most effective because when we can very easily and uh, reach in hypnotherapy that emotion store in body. Uh, for those who know the, the work, for example, of Gabor Mato in describing how the body is, uh, trauma is stored in the body, we can release it. It's in the body, mind is in control of the body. Through the mind, we can reach it and release it. So same way, for example, depression, it's so much stored. When we release it, the person starts seeing some light in the end of the tunnel because they just stop be overwhelmed with that emotion which are stored inside. And it's a special topic, which is trauma grieving. Again, very often mistaking for depression because when we realize how much trauma took from us, how our life will be different if we will not be traumatized as children. And we grieve it, we mourn it. When we often don't recognize it that we're mourning it, but we do. And same as with the, with the grieving process, we need to get to that end, which is acceptance of new reality and start to living in the present moment. And then rediscovery. And many people who came through the trauma, and I said a big amount of people, probably even when you will think about yourself, when it was that time in your life when you start feeling like, oh, I need to change something. Am I actually where I wanted to be? Do I actually doing what I want to do? Because we have a lot of stories, especially in the women, but also men now, lately, 
who will go to that? Like, I am 30, I am 40, I am 45. So life should not supposed to be about this. <laughs> Shouldn't be about something else. In men, we call it midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah? But that's the same. They just get to that phase when they realize this cannot be it. It cannot be just this going and going and going and going. There has to be something more in it. And because they are also traumatized. Because our expectations too high, too little. Not allowed to do what they want to do, not allowed to do. You know, how many women not allow their husband to choose the colors in where they're living? They don't care if that color is upsetting them. <laughs> it's my house! <laughs> But, you know, it's actually a couple. They have also right. They have same needs, same desires. Yeah? But we kind of need to learn the realizing that we are in that together and start rediscovering together. And now, in the, after COVID, we, huge, we see a huge uh, increase in mental health issues. Yeah? But it's not because of COVID that virus cannot do anything with that. Yeah? But it, because we took off from people that what they're surviving with, that structure, that routine, that I'm going to the work, and in the work I'm this, playing this role, and when I'm home and I'm playing this role, and just going, going on and on. And we took it from them. And they just saying, I have no idea what I'm supposed to do now. Because then they start playing off these trauma responses. And they just start coming from that fears. I am home. What am I supposed to do here? We're around the children uh, running around. We saw a huge increase in domestic violence during uh, during pandemic, exactly because the couple's not actually working together. And I have to tell you that it doesn't matter if it's the man or woman who is who is violent. Yeah? And not and don't and and don't underestimate the amount of women who are violent in the domestic abuse. We just don't speak about that so much. Yeah? But uh, I was volunteering in the prison where was the men and women prison and practically all the women in are there for drug, alcohol abuse and related violence towards their partners. So we need to find where we are. So in conclusion, reconnecting with inner strengths can be actually very easy if we use the right tools. We actually start understanding that it's the mind who is in command of our brain, of our body, of our hormones, of our nerves. Yeah? And because a lot of people ask me to teach them, and I was repeating it one by one and one by one, <laughs> one by one. So uh, I created a course which is called Complex PTSD Blueprint. And, uh, if you will make the photo of that, you will get my contacts and our links. And um, in that course, I'm really explaining all that, how is trauma created on a, uh, our main level, on energetic level, how it's affecting body, and what are the techniques and, and uh, strategies, how we can get from it, and actually start helping people to get better. Yeah? And my program, what I'm working with, Trauma Response Reprogramming, it's a three-month program, and people go from drugs to no drugs, from eating disorder to eat normally and be in control, from depression to no depression, you know, borderline there after one month calm, stuff like that. PTSD, we can stop uh, responses for PTSD in one, two sessions. So it's really about that, that if we actually take into account that we know now how the mind working and start working that we can actually start changing the nations because when we change the one person, we change their family, we change their family, we change the next family, we change their co-workers and it's changing all environments. So thank you for attention. If you have any questions, I'm happy to discuss. It's my passion. So, you know, like you see that. So uh, will you catch me on the break or lunchtime or in the evening. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you.